Howard Beach. Right. So when we were coming up on every every area, the FBI always said they love coming to Howard Beach because it was just flooded with mob. You know what I mean? So anywhere <laughs> we went, parks, anywhere, it was still mafioso out, you know? Yeah. Howard Beach was flooded. And yeah. Ozone Park and everything still. So growing up, it was, you know, loan sharks everywhere, sports betting, everyone had an office. You know, it was still like that. It yeah. kind of died 2014, I want to say. 2015, yeah. that's when it really went downhill. They locked up Vinny for the Latanza heist case. Yeah. Then afterwards, they had my case. And they kind of crushed the Banano family. It was a wrap in the Queens fraction. I mean, but coming up, and then the Gambinos all got crushed in 2011 when they locked up the 160 guys. You know what I mean? So the Howard yeah. Beach Ozone Park was wiped out. But for the most part before that, from like 2002 to like 2014, it was still flooded with the mob everywhere, you know? And, that, and that's pretty late. And interesting enough is I had Frank Fiordolino on, and he was um, an associate with the Bananos. He was from the other side, hung out a lot of the Sicilians in Knickerbocker Avenue. So right. he's kind of like the before Gene, you know, before the Bananos 2000. You're the after. But the, but the Bananos had a good run. Messino – built up, rebuilt the family prior to flipping. If you can kind of talk about, you know, the pre-Messino and post-Messino era. Right. So with my book, we had a good story in there with Joe Messino because my boss, Vinny, wanted to rob him after he became a rat because he knew all the, because we knew all the gold bars were in the house because we had my, uh, one of the guys in our crew, his friend installed the safe. So we knew where the safe was. They, they took that story out of my book. I was furious. They edited my book really bad without my permission. But, um, um, they, they took a hundred pages out. Me and Lou were very upset about it. This you gotta, you gotta hire me. I would negotiate it. Listen, me, uh, me, right. me, me and Lou did this book very well. And this lady just decided yeah. to take out a hundred pages of my book, but yeah. everyone still loved the book, but there yeah, was a yeah. lot of stuff taken out. Yeah. And the Messino story was one of them. We were trying to, um, home invade him and we were going to take the gold bars out of the house. Oh shit. We, so, he ratted. we were going in that house, but then we got word that the feds took them already. Wow. So we didn't go. Yeah, that was that, that was a whole thing about Messina. You no, know, yeah, football. like I said, he had a he had a big run. Uh, he was the the Don, you know, whatever you want to call. But um, my oh, I always say this in every interview. I yeah. don't feel they should have gave him a deal. Um, I feel that's bullshit. I feel like um, he was ordering all the murders. He was getting people killed for no reason. Yeah. Uh, he was doing grimy shit too. And then you give this guy a deal and telling people that he ordered to do this stuff. No, nah, I don't. I don't agree with that. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. So, so when you were, when you were, let's call it 2000, when did, when did he flip Messina? I forget. Oh, five. I think he came out. He was bad. Okay. So you caught very little of the Messina era, but they were very strong. So well, he were, liked Ronnie G a lot. He did. Okay. Yeah. Ronnie used to bring him pastries once a week to his house. <laughs> yeah. I probably yes. some else too, but fair enough. Got it. Yes. So he liked Ronnie G. So you're kind of on the, the right team, if you will. Post Messino, you know. Hated Vinny though. He, he didn't. Hated Vinny and Sarah with a passion. Really? Yes. And Vinny hated him, yes. Interesting. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I knew every day. Because um, I always get fascinated by, like, the change in leadership and how does it affect the whole organization. post Messino. what did it mean to you? Was it meaningless? Was it a new regime? Was it better or worse? What did post Messino mean to Gene Barella during that period? I mean, like I said, we really didn't know him. But when he went bad, the Bernardo family was – they. Were, I, like I I think I said this before. They were trying to say that anyone got made under him wasn't recognized. Yeah, reverse, right? Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, people were flipping out about that. And then we had, like, so many different bosses till Tommy D came on, till Mike uh, – they appointed this guy, Tommy D. Yeah. And Mike, you know, is the active boss right now. You know, he's a serious guy. And um, the, the family was a mess. And then it rebuilt. It did rebuild, like, in 2010, 2011. Then we were good yeah. till 2014. That was it. It was over. Wow. Yeah. So, so, you, so you're feeling pretty good about yourself. You have your your mob career. You're you're doing some work and that kind of stuff. Uh, is there anything that you did, whether in the book, public, private, whatever, anything that you did now that you reflect on specifically a specific event that you? Um, that you yeah, there was regret? one thing I did. I always I always held this with me. Um, very upsetting to me. Um, like I never really got upset about anything I did in my life. I didn't yeah. put it in the book, but um, only one thing really upset me. Um. I was um I was serving time in 2006 from 2010, and I came across this kid in Green Correctional like 09. He became my good friend, this kid Vinny. Yeah. And um he wanted to hang out with me in the street and everything. And um he came to he, we ended up we both go home in 2010, and he started hanging around with me. And uh you know he was a bad drinker, and he would blackout drink, and um he already did time for a DWI. Oh wow. And I want to say this is like 2012, 2013. Um he ended up killing somebody with a car. And uh, drunk driving. And uh, he got bailed out on $300,000 bail. And um, I know.